Okay, so uh, yesterday we talked about lesson five. We're going to review quickly here, uh, and then we're going to give you some class time to work on some questions here, and we'll go over your quiz at the end here as well and talk about all that stuff there that we need to. Uh, so don't forget, we're going to talk about ions today, of course. Uh, ions are atoms that have a charge because they've either gained or lost electrons uh, to fill their valence level, right? So they can fill up the outside energy level. Um, electrons may be transferred, of course, usually from the metal to the non-metal. So the non-metal will take them. Uh, they form cations, of course, and the non-metals will gain them, and that will form anions, uh, which is probably, we did that example in ACL. We'll do those drawings coming up. Um, Ions are atoms that have electrical charge because they've either gained or lost electrons. Cations are what we refer to as metal atoms, and anions are anions. Where's anions here? Uh, anions are for the nonmetals. Yes. Okay. Um, we talked a little bit about polyatomic ions yesterday. Don't forget this. I'm going to give you two. Uh, you got one sheet from yesterday. I'm going to give you another sheet today. Now, on today's sheet that I give you, you're going to run across this. So, for example. Uh, if you remember, uh, sorry, let me go back here for a sec. Remember this example from yesterday? Per nitrate, nitrate, and nitrite, and hyponitrite. So just keep that in mind when you're doing today's new worksheet because, for example, you might come across something like uh, Mg, oh, I don't know, uh, SO2. All right. Um, so remember, the first part always has to be the metal. So we'd call this magnesium, of course. And that's a two plus charge, right? SO2, you're not going to find on the periodic table. And make sure you have your periodic tables out because we're going to do some more examples today. So grab those out. Um, SO2, you're not going to find on the periodic table. It's not there. Um, and remember, if this is a two plus, that means these have to gain some amount of electrons here. Well, SO2 is pretty similar to SO3 and SO4, except this, of course, all have a two minus charge. Um, but there's just less oxygens, right? So, of course, uh, today we know that SO4 would be sulfate, SO3 is sulfite, SO2 would be hyposulfite. Okay, so that's what we want to call that one. Yep, yeah, good. Okay, so let's not forget about that. And there's hypophosphate. Don't forget there's perphosphate as well. So if you get to one and you're not sure and you can't find it, maybe you just got to change the number of oxygens and kind of adjust it accordingly based on that. All right? So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, cations and anions, the sum has to be zero. Don't forget. We'll talk a little bit more about that again today. Uh, cations always first. I'll do these again here just real quick from uh, yesterday just for a quick uh, little refresher here. Uh, but we're going to add on to a few things, and, and we're actually going to uh, copy down a few a few uh, new notes as well here. Uh, just don't forget, so when we combine these together, we're going to swap and drop, of course. This one loses one. This one gains one, so we don't write the ones right. Uh, so that'd be NaCl or sodium chloride. This one here was Al and Cl. We're going to do the swap and drop. The three comes down. The one comes over and down. We don't write the one, so that's aluminum chloride. Right? There's only one specific way that these can combine together to give me zero, right? Three plus, and I need so three plus minus minus minus. There's your three minus. There's your three minuses there. Yes, three minus, so that they equal out to zero. Uh, aluminum oxide, of course. This is a little off here. Aluminum uh, three plus and aluminum three plus, and we need one, two and three, yes. Six plus in total, six minus in total, yes. So that oh, remember, overall they have to be neutral. And of course we get that, if you remember, from swapping and dropping, right? So three, and then the two comes over and down, yes. Good, okay. Um, yeah. Polyatomic ions, uh, I think we did these yesterday, yeah? Yeah, we did. Um, don't forget, with polyatomic ions, uh, you may have to use brackets, so keep that in mind. Don't forget the brackets. Um, in this case here, we have some lithium carbonate. One comes over and down. We don't need to worry about the one, but the two comes over and down, so we're going to put a two there. We wouldn't use brackets there because lithium is just an atom by itself. So basically we're saying, hey, I need to have two lithiums, right, two of these to go with one of those, yes? I don't need brackets around lithium because there's only one atom there. It's not a group of atoms, right? However, when we get to this, this is ammonium. 
and remember that's sulfide yes uh, so I got to tell you something else just don't let me forget periodic table stuff remember just remember I'm putting you two in charge uh, one over two over we do need brackets there because we have a group of atoms polyatomic ion list basically like I said before if you want the little cheater version if you're picking something from the top left there in that polyatomic thing and you're gonna put a two or a three there you got to have brackets yes or four or whatever the case might be one you don't need to anything else two three four you need brackets there and same thing here of course uh, ammonium and carbonate uh, brackets two one comes over down I don't need to worry about the one all right questions anyone okay uh, so I think we're into the new oh no not quite yet um, iron 2 plus and, and, and O2 minus of course this would be iron 3 oxide or sorry iron 2 oxide my bad 2 plus 2 minus swap drop and reduce don't forget to reduce okay um, if we don't reduce, I don't know if you remember last year, we talked about molar masses. You remember molar mass? Where you add up all the atoms and, and then you get a molar mass and then you do moles with it. Do you remember moles, amounts, and then uh, grams and stuff like that? If you don't get the right formula, you won't get the right molar mass. And of course, that'll affect every other measurement with that, right? So it's, you know, and also if you're writing chemical equations without the right formula, it's not going to balance out very well and stuff. So, and then this one here, uh, the three comes over and then the two comes over. This would be iron three and that'd be iron two. Don't forget the Roman numerals today for those things as well, right? So iron two, iron three. Uh, we should have those notes in there done already, yes? Good, okay, I think that's the review part. Yes, uh, and then you're gonna fill this in today. I kind of gave you the first few to do. Um, I, it didn't really work out today because just with how things went, so. Um, I can check this for you if you want, or, or maybe if we're done, we can uh, just ask and I can check it over for you or whatever, or put up answers or something like that. Uh, today, uh, in addition to that, though, we're going to talk a little bit about something called hydrated ionic compounds. We're only going to copy this right here. So please do write that down so we have, uh, we have an idea what these are called. And then I just want you to co uh, copy that as well. The two stars there would be just perfectly fine. So hydrated ionic compounds, uh, this will happen quite often actually. Uh, some ionic compounds that we deal with, just in, you know, even in the chemistry lab, just have some waters that are attached to them basically. That's just kind of how they come. So we call these compounds hydrates. Um, and if we remove the water, we call it anhydrous, which if you, who's the farmers here, any uh, farmers? They use anhydrous fertilizer, so they take out the water basically. All right. Um, they look a little goofy. They look a little something like this. So I'll let you copy those two. Don't worry about the H2O is neutral. It does not affect the overall. Don't worry about that part. Just copy these two examples right here, uh, Na2CO3 with the 10 waters and that there. And then we'll talk about that in a second here. All right. So these look uh, a little different than what we're used to. But what we have to understand is they're still ionic compounds. So we start still start with an ionic compound. We're just going to ignore the second half of this. And by the way, that dot that you see there, uh, that doesn't that doesn't represent times in this case. That's just basically we had to separate this compound from that stuff there, basically. All right. So that's all that is. Um, the first part here. This is still okay an ionic compound. So we still name it just like we did before. This of course Na is what somebody huh? sodium. So this is still sodium. Uh, once again, if that's the metal part, then this has to be the non-metal part, and there's a combination of ions. What's that called on your list? Carbonate. So that's still sodium carbonate. All right. Now, um, you know, I guess we could go and do the next one as well, but, and again, where that comes from is sodium is a one plus, carbonate is a two minus, and they swapped and dropped, and that's how we got this compound there yes sodium one plus carbonate two minus so that's how we kind of got that uh name there sodium carbonate now um 
normally we say we're not going to use prefixes, but we actually are going to use a prefix for this part because this is not the ionic compound part, right? This is waters. So we have to describe how many waters we have. When you think about water, we're going to think about hydrates, all right? So basically, we need to describe how many water molecules are attached to this compound. What's the prefix for 10? No. Dies two, huh? De deca, right? So we're going to call this deca hydrate. Okay. So we are going to use a prefix there, but we're not describing ionic compounds. We're just describing how many waters are attached. And that's all one word. So sodium carbonate deca hydrate. You're going to see these. They look very different, obviously, than regular ones because they got the dot there and they got some waters after. They're called hydrates. Here we go, MgSO4. What's uh, what's the name of that one there? What's the first part? Magnesium. And what's the last part? Sulfate. Okay, so magnesium sulfate. Okay, again, if you're wondering, that comes from 2 plus. Magnesium is a 2 plus. Remember, if that's the metal, the rest has to be the non metal. So SO4 would have to be the other part of this, which is a 2 minus, right? And we would swap and drop and reduce, of course, 2 plus, 2 minus. Magnesium loses 2. This group of atoms wants to gain 2, right? So magnesium sulfate, what's the, this is my favorite question. I can tell who takes French in this class. Uh, what's the prefix for 7? No. Huh? No. No, that's 5. Heptahydrate. I also know French, just so you know. I know two things. Où est la bibliothèque? Où est la discothèque? Je m'appelle Monsieur Bacek. Comment ça va? Oh, I know four. Merci. A2? Oh, five. Hey, look at me remembering French. I'm now tapped out. All right. Uh, heptahydrates. If you need, uh, I'm going to say this to you, and I, this is kind of a cop-out, but I apologize, but if you need to remember what the prefixes are, we're going to take them in the next lesson. So you could always go into Google Classroom and look there. It's a mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, deca. And then 11, I don't know, but 12 is dodeca. Um, but uh, they're in that list there, or you can just Amazon them. Okay. Uh, Google, Alexa, uh, Siri. Um, who's the other one? What's the other one? Is there another one? Google. Is there other? Okay. Frank. You can just Frank. Call Frank. Um, but um, anyway, magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. And again, like I said, those prefixes, just Google them for now. But we're going to take them probably tomorrow. So if you want to print off the notes or if you want to look at the prefixes, they're there for you. All right. Um, okay. Now we're just going to do a little bit more practice. So that's what uh, hydrated ionic compounds look like. And they're pretty common. Uh, we have to know how to do this because, again, uh, most of the time they, they come like this. And that affects, of course, their molar mass. So if we were going to look at their molar mass, like how many grams per mole this weighs, we need to know how many waters are attached. All right. Um, next, naming ionic compounds. Uh, of course, we're not going to use prefixes. Um, we need to use Roman numerals, et cetera, et cetera. And we're just going to write down these, uh, some examples here, and we're going to go through those real quick here. So I'm going to let you copy these right there. And let's cut it off about there, I guess. So a couple of reminders. Um, all right, ready? All right. Um, well, Na2, so this is, of course, Na is sodium, right? Uh, S is sol. Well, it was sulfur, but it's got a charge, so remember we dropped the endings and we add the i, yes? So sulfide. All right. Now, the thing I need to tell you is this, periodic table time. Um, it gets the formula from the swap and drop, yes? Na2S, swap and drop. The one thing that you have to remember here is this, and uh, 
I don't know which periodic table you used last year, but if you were in Science 10 in my class, we kind of give you some extra things that are not on this one. Um, but this is the one you're going to use next year as well. So we, the Alberta government basically just decides that, hey, you need to know this at some point here. Uh, at some point, you need to just remember, right? So remember, obviously, the charges are all here for you because these are all the metal. And remember, again, if we're talking about magnesium atoms, there is no charge, right? Magnesium has 12 protons, 12 electrons. If it can get rid of those two electrons, it forms a two-plus charge. That's there, of course, for you. Those two electrons need to go somewhere. So where do they go? Well, they go to a nonmetal or this group of polyatomic ions that I'm circling right here right now on your periodic table. Yes? The thing to remember is this, though. If you look at, for example, um, the noble gases, there's no charge with those because they're stable by themselves. But if you look at fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine, they all tend to want to have to gain one electron, right? So that is the minus one column, yes? F one minus, Cl negative, uh, Br one minus, I one minus, yes? They want to gain one electron. So if you remember last year, we put a minus one in there, minus one, minus one, that's not on there anymore, yes? You see a, basically just a line right there. That just basically means, I don't know why they put that there. I wish they would have just left it blank if that's what they wanted because people think that that's a minus one, and it is for that one. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, group 17 is the minus ones, yes? Make sure you know this. However, when we get to oxygen, sulfur, silurium, tellurium, they are too short. They have room to gain two electrons to become more stable. Oxygen has six valence electrons, yes? So it's got room for two more. So they form a two minus charge. That's the two minus column, yes? Last year we would have had two minus, two minus, two minus, two minus. This year they have a dash there. Basically, again, I wish they would have just left it blank. That doesn't mean it's a minus one. They, uh, what, they, what they did was they just took it off and put a dash. In other words, there should be something there, but it's your job to know that that's a two minus. S is a two minus, yes? O is a two minus, right? Nitrogen, that's right here. One, two, those three there. Nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic. All will form, form minus three charges because, again, they have five valence electrons. There's room for three more to make the eight. So they all gain three electrons, yes? So that is the minus three column right? Carbon and silicone have four valence electrons. So the question becomes now, does carbon want to gain four or would carbon lose four to become more stable? What do you think? Or is there another option? Gain, gain or lose four? What's e well, think about it. What, what's going to be easier, gain four or lose four? The answer is probably both the same, yes? So carbon's not particularly great at forming ionic compounds because it either has to gain four or it has to lose four. So it's really good at sharing, right? Lots of carbon types of bonds uh, that we're going to talk about. Organic chemistry, which we'll not really talk about here. But organic chemistry is all about carbons in the center, basically. It's really good at sharing electrons, right? Um, so that's a little different, right? But so usually we have zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, yes? So make sure you know that. So that's how I know that S is a two minus, right? Um, so that's sodium sulfide. This one here is calcium and, again, oxide. And, again, you have to know that owes a two minus in this case. Swap, drop, and reduce, yes? Two plus, two minus. Swap, drop, reduce. This one here, now again, uh, you know, it's probably been a while, but when you find, if you're like, oh, what's Fe again? I don't really remember. It's iron, and most of you probably remember that. But look where iron is, it's in the middle. So right away, when I put down iron, you probably should put that down as well. 
because iron has more than one charge. Quite often they do in that 3 to 12 section, yes? All right. So 3 to 12, we want to make sure that we have, uh, uh, well, sorry, not make sure, I guess, but we want to double check to make sure if we have Roman numerals here, what are the two options? Now, you can do reverse swap and drop uh, is what some science teachers will tell you. This is a one here, yes, and that's a one there. So the one goes up here and the one would go here. But of course, uh, in this case here, that doesn't make sense because iron can't come in a one plus. And not only that, but nitrogen or nitride is not a one minus. In fact, we know that nitrogen or nitride has to be a three minus. So therefore, if I'm going to multiply that by three, I have to multiply this by three to make a three plus. So this would be iron three. The other option is, if you're not happy about that, I don't really like that to be honest, but that's, some teachers will tell you that. Um, I just like to like, you know, write down your two options if you need to. When you swap and drop, which one's going to give you the right formula? Right, that's ultimately what it comes down to. If I swap, drop, and reduce, which one gives me the right formula? Well, if I swap and drop two and three, that's not going to look like this. If I swap, drop three and three, that's one and one. Yeah, that's the right one. So I need to use iron three. Up to you. Doesn't matter, but you obviously need to name those right. There's no right or there's no like half marks because I like all of you. Uh, there's only right or wrong. All right. And then this one here looks a little complicated, but again, we're not, try we're not trying to recreate stuff here. We're just trying to use our periodic table and the list of polyatomic ions to come up with a name. K is the first part. That's potassium. So we're going to write down potassium. And then if that takes up to there, the rest of that has to be the nonmetal. Well, there's a whole bunch of atoms there, so I probably wouldn't... I'd probably look in the top left in that polyatomic list and find HPO4, right? Uh, HPO4 turns out it's called hydrogen phosphate. It's there somewhere. You just got to look for it. It's probably, I want to say, I want to say it's over by the phosphates, I think, isn't it? Top right? Okay. Top right. So I think it's over by the P's there kind of thing. So that's the only thing is you just got to be a little careful with some of those, but... Um, but it's based on phosphorus, that's why. It's the same thing with the sulfur. There's also a hydrogen sulfate, and it's based on sulfur, so it's kind of in the sulfur area, I think. I think. All right, just a few more quick examples here, and then we'll be uh, uh, done. Well, let's do those four, and then I'll be quiet. All right, so... Uh, in this case here, again, first part's always the metal, so Mg, magnesium. Uh, let's not forget, we also have something called manganese, which uh, is different. That's Mn, okay? Um, that comes in a couple different charges as well, so let's be careful with that. But this here is, of course, uh, magnesium. What is this uh, OH here? What is that OH? Hydroxide. Uh, what is uh, hydroxide? What's that responsible for? Do you remember? What is, uh, what is that responsible for? And of course, remember, it comes from this and this, right? So technically, we need to have that basically, or two of those, yes? That's why we have the brackets there, right? Paul, there's more than one atom. We need two or more. What's hydroxide responsible for? Yep. Mm, well, you it could be with iron. But if you had OH minus in a compound, what does that tell you about the compound? Do you know? You should know, I think. Eh? Yeah. Huh? Well, with uh, iron, it probably would be. With iron, it probably would be. Yep. But anytime, just, just OH minus, what does that tell you? It is a... No? Starts with a B, A, yeah, yeah, it's a base. Um, so that'll tell you it's a base. It'll, this would I almost get this would I guarantee you would have a pH greater than seven, whatever it happens to be. Um, but it's going to be a pH greater than seven for sure. Okay, um, we'll talk about that and we'll talk about that in unit three and how to figure out the pH of this. 
uh, if we use like two grams of magnesium hydroxide, uh, you know, in 100 milliliters of water, what's the pH that going to be? So we'll talk about how to do that. Okay. Uh, this one here, well, there's that funny one again, right, that we talked about earlier. So uh, first part is copper. Copper has more than one charge. So we got to do that. And, of course, this is sulfate here. Um, oh, this is exactly what happened last class, and I'm not super happy about it. Frick. Oh, where are we here? That's not it. 